Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 25th episode of Kentucky Go Digital Live. My name is Courtney DeRosset, the CIO of Floyd County Schools, and I'm joined today with our Kentucky Go Digital Live team. We have Heather Wariel. She is the digital learning coach for KDE. We have Brooke Whitlow, technology coordinator for Hardin County Schools, and Elaine Abanatha, the technology integration specialist for McCracken County Schools. Schools. Hello, everyone. We are also joined by today our um, lead on the show. We have Superintendent Sherry Horsley from Greenup County Schools, and she is here with her team, um, Rebecca Corsetti, Teresa Morissa, the instructional supervisors for the district, and Stacy Spears, and tech, the technology integration specialist. They will be joining us today as we learn and listen to them um, and all the awesome things they're doing in Greenup County. Um, today, if you can join with us on the YouTube channel, Brooke will be over there in the chat. If you are unable to participate in the chat, if you can log in to your Google account, that will give you the access. So just sign in up at the top and you can chat with Brooke. And I know Elaine and Heather may be popping in and out as well. If you have any questions, make sure you get in there and introduce yourself. And um, we'll also be on Twitter. So if you can get on the hashtag Kentucky Go Digital, then you can follow some of the things that are going on in the show as well. Um, but getting into the meat of the show, Miss Horsley, you are Google certified. In our last show, we had um, Dr. Kirk Biggerstaff talking about how he is Google, Google certified, and you are too. Talk about leading the charge. So when we look at Greenup County Schools and all the things you're doing Google-wise and leading the pack, you are truly leading the pack by modeling what it takes to be that leader. Um, so I, I can't wait to learn um, all the things you're doing and how you have modeled that white way by stepping up and taking on that test and, and leading the way. So I, I can't wait to learn from you. Awesome. We are happy to be here today to share. Um, we are all about always looking for some 21st century things to work with our kids and our staff. And last year I talked uh, to Laura about coming to our district and little did I know what a great impact that was going to make on our district in such a short time. So if there's districts out there that have not had Laura's team in to work on Google training, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, at the beginning in August of this year, we had no certified uh, educators in our district. My goal was to have 50 by February. My wonderful people, my team uh, has superseded that goal. So like you said, in order to get people to do, people to do things, you have to create buy-in, you have to model. It's hard to ask them to do something that you don't do as well. Um, and I am not a technology guru, but uh, I took the test and got certified. And now when people come in to test, I say, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, so we had zero in August. Now we have 65 Google certified educators in our district. So we are above 25% that are certified. Um, this started with buy-in in August. We had Laura's team come in and train our administrators, again, from the top down to do the training. And then we trained uh, our media specialist and a group of lead teachers in September. From there, Stacy and our team at the districts had put together uh, a format for people to be certified throughout and to support them in that training and so forth. So we are just so excited to share with you today some of the things that we are doing with Google. To get these people certified, I wanted to first train the teachers. Rather than just throw out Chromebooks, I wanted them to be able to be trained in uh, Google use in the classroom. So to get them onboarded, we have the training for Google certified. With that, once they got Google certified, each teacher gets three Chromebooks for their classroom. So there was an incentive to do that. I can tell you that we've purchased over 177 Chromebooks this year uh, for those people to go into the classrooms. Um, we are trying to structure support for those teachers. Again, we've set up uh, PD sessions and trainings and Stacy has been uh, the head of that to help the, our folks in our district get certified. We have, have used Google for planning and reflection on PD. For planning, we are um, using Google Forms and Sheets to track, get some input from teachers on what do they need extra PD on. So we're sending out surveys and getting those responses through Google so we can work on that. 
we are also we do plus deltas after each PD session. So we're using Google Sheets in plus delta to help or in Google to help us look at what they liked about the PD. What do they need after that? So again, we're using it for planning, for surveying and for reflection. Our high school uh, staff is also using forms for their staff PD. Um, EGPs. Now, I want to show you a special thing that we're looking to do for next year. As you know, state budget has cut funding for PD. We've had a lot of PD in our district the last few years. Therefore, we have a lot of teacher leaders and a lot of good things that are going on within our classroom. So we're going to do something next year. This is our plan to start a pineapple chart for PD sessions. You know, the pineapple is a symbol that's used for um, inviting hospitality, welcoming people into your area. So we've started this pineapple chart and what we plan to do with this is teachers are going to be able to welcome other teachers for informal observations, peer observations into their classrooms to learn new techniques and strategies that they're using that they want to share. So they can go beyond their classroom within their buildings or other buildings in our district and they can find things that are happening and they can see it in action and be able to take those back to their classroom. So I'm going to show you how we're going to set that up. We're going to uh, do this, of course, on Google with a pineapple chart. And with this, teachers are going to be able to identify class activities that they're working on that they want to share with colleagues. And they'll post this in the pineapple chart on a calendar. They'll list who they are, what room, what activity, what strategy that they're going to share. One extra that they can do, this is individual, they don't have to do this, but they can include an icon where we can video that. That way teachers can look at this later if they don't have time to go in or they miss that. We'll have that stored on our YouTube channel so that they can look at it later. So you can do PD in your pajamas at home <laughs> when you want to look at that. Um, so again, if they just uh, drag this video camera icon over, then that allows us to know that they want to be videoed so we can share it with more people. So this is our plan for next year, something that we're going to add. We have used um, G Suite tools for lots of things in our district over the past several months. We've been using it to organize all of our PD and our data and our resources. Uh, we have docs and slides that we've created. Sometimes we do team drives. Sometimes our uh, staff at each school does a classroom where they store things and activities that people can do for PD credit later on or share ideas within the school. Um, we also have different people in our district who have created playlists and videos on YouTube channels. And we're going to expand with ED Puzzle uh, and YouTube as one of our goals for next year. We're working on our current strategic plan. And this Google is going to be a big part of that plan. And we also are using Google Sites, Hangouts, Docs, Classrooms um, to use PD and, and share with our staff. And this, you know, goes down into what's happening in our classrooms. It's really nice to have teachers invite us to come into their classroom to see what's going on as a result of the PD that we delivered. So I have my experts here today and they are going to share with you some specific ideas. I'm sure that a lot of people are using these ideas uh, throughout the, uh, the state and across the country, but we just want to share with you a few things that you might could use in your classrooms as well. We're using um, Google Sites and right now we've created a book challenge website for our teachers. So um, within the district, we do a lot of book studies, but um, sometimes some of us have uh, scheduling conflicts that make it hard to meet for each session for a book study. So uh, we created what we consider more of a book challenge. And the first book that we picked was the Google Infused Classroom. And it's by Holly Clark and Tanya Avrith. And um, the basic structure is that teachers read parts of the book and then they complete challenges from the book. And once they complete those challenges, they'll earn PD credit and uh, digital badges. So um, we're, we wanted this to be like a book study, but we know that scheduling is hard to do and time is important for teachers. So by putting this on a Google site, it's up all year long and teachers can work on this challenge at their own pace. They've got the ability to um, reflect and apply what they've learned from the book and use it in their classroom. They can do this independently, but they could also do it with a group of teachers at their school. And um, we structured this into 
five different main challenges. And if a teacher wants to, they can do all five challenges or they can do two to three challenges or just one challenge. It's, it's totally up to them what they want to do with this book. So um, this is the Google site and I'm gonna show you what the challenges look like. Um, challenge one is pedagogy and tools where they earn an hour of PD. Challenge two, formative assessment, they can earn up to three hours PD on that one. Differentiation is challenge three. Then they have reflection and curation for challenge four. And challenge five is digital portfolios. Challenge one tells you what pages they need to read in the book and uh, the activity that goes with it. This is kind of the beginning challenge, the prerequisite part of it. And um, once they read the pages and do the reflection questions in Google Docs, then those teachers will get an hour of PD and then they'll earn this pedagogy and tools digital badge. Beyond the challenge, the way the book is uh, written, there are um, demonstrations of learning through the book. And this is where students can demonstrate what they've learned in class using some type of digital tool. So if teachers decide to um, decide that they want to podcast, they want their students to podcast in class, they would read pages 56 through 59 in the Google Infused Classroom book. And then the teacher has to plan and implement an activity where the students get to create podcasts. And once they've got the activity going in the classroom, take a picture of it, tweet it, use this hashtag that we are asking them to use so we can find the picture. And then they complete a reflection form after it's finished. And within the reflection, describe the activity where the students created the podcast, what their grade level was, and then they reflect upon that activity as well. The teachers that complete the challenges and earning the badges, they get their own page within the Google site. And this way we can kind of highlight that they've completed this challenge or the demonstrations of learning as well. And if you notice, we've got four that have completed the first challenge and two that have gone on to the second one. Um, Zach is on here. He did challenge one, challenge two. He chose not to do challenge three, but he went on and did challenge four. So um, by having this Google site and a book challenge, the teachers really take ownership in what they're reading and they're able to take it to the application level and choose what they want to do with the book. So that's one way that we're using Google Sites. Um, quickly, do you care to tell me like who, how did you all come up with that? Who developed it? Um, I have so many questions. I'm, I know this is only a, an hour show or less. So um, how do you get that out? Who's, vet, who's looking at what puts that in? Tell me a little more about this because this looks absolutely amazing. I'm thinking PD at home and your PJs to like the infinite level. And I see Brooke, her mouth is like, I already see her eating all this up. So Tell me more about it. What, who, how do you get this out to them? And who looks at what they're submitting when the teachers complete the different challenges? I send it out in a news in a district newsletter to the teachers. Uh -huh. And then Ms. Horsley, you've also sent it out as well to the principals. Is that yes, I sent out the principals and I bought each school a book so that they would all have one. Okay. And then how, how do you all give award the credit? Okay. Well, um, most of the things that they complete the reflection forms are in google forms yep. and so um, anytime a teacher completes that i get an email automatically sent to me so then i just go and take that information and um, mark it as complete in another spreadsheet and um, then i manage the badges i email the badges and then add it to the website as well so did you build the the questions and the and the badges and did you put yes. all that together? Yes. So um, I'm taking some of the information that they've done. Um, so challenge two. Um, this page also has more resources that take the teachers into a deeper understanding of the tools that were shared in the book, and um, then the teachers have given me permission to take their ideas and um, activities that they put in the reflection form and I'm putting it back onto the website as kind of like a little 
informative way of how our teachers are using the, the technology tools in the class. So it's like you're improving the learning. So when you yes. are getting their feedback, you're also posting it for other people to learn. So it's a it's it's like layered PD. Right. Yes. That's awesome. That is that is so great. That is exactly how when you look what Google tools can offer a district. This is this is a great example. And this is a fabulous book that just has so many strategies that teachers can use. And when we see one that they're using, we try to highlight, we try to model them in our principal meetings. So that we can show our principals what they need to be looking for as well. And Stacy's going to be modest, but I will tell you, once the author of this book found out what she was doing, got invited by the uh, author so that she could learn some more about this book. Well, and the, and I, I mean, we're kind of back channel talking here. Um, I'm glad they invited you there. Did they tell you to share this or ask you to share this to up their copies of purchasing of the book, or um, um, is this something that is? Um, just for Greenup County or are you going to, are you looking at sharing this with the world? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's a public website, so anyone can use it. And um, I believe all the Google settings on all the challenges, they're public as well. So anybody can kind of participate if they find it or stumble on it. So that No, good to know. <laughs> I'll note that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, you know, I'll get the emails of those that complete um, the forms, and if they want, I can always email them the, the digital badge. So um, we've even created a page on our district website for um, certified, classified, and administrative badges. So we've got badge boards that showcase um, the Google certification and book challenge badges and other accomplishments that the teachers are earning. This is something that we've just started um, this month, but um, now that we have so many teachers who are Google certified, we're kind of going into the, now what do we do next? What will our next step be? So um, after listening to a podcast um, from Jennifer Gonzalez, um, we decided to use the mastermind model what we did was we identified one teacher from each of the seven schools in Greenup County that are that have really taken off with Google um, Apps for Education, and they're using Google in their classroom with their kids. They're using it um, to plan their lessons, and they're sharing it with the teachers in their building. So we've created this group of masterminds where um, we're going to be meeting monthly and just sharing what we're doing in our classes and with our students. And then we're using Google Sites to kind of build a repository of um, what we're learning and what we're interested in. Um, so this site is dedicated to sustain professional growth and then take um, our Google certified educators and give them more ideas and resources and share information. So as this group um, begins meeting more, we've decided we want to meet throughout the summer and start building up um, our resources, then the masterminds are going to branch out into their own schools and hopefully start their own groups within their individual schools and share what we build on this website um, with their teachers. So. The learn page is where we're going to come up with activities and ideas that we're doing to give to our teachers. Uh, we've decided to do a page on um, what we're watching on YouTube and what um, how teachers are using uh, YouTube in their classrooms and channels that we might find valuable for teachers. Then we've got page on reading. So we'll be talking about um, what professional books we like or, or books that we might be currently reading. Um, any online articles or blogs we'll be linking that we find. So this can be like a one-stop shop for teachers um, to learn what's trending or current in education right now. And then finally, we'll, um, we're kind of getting into podcasts as well. So 
um, we'll be listing some podcasts that we also like. I'm incredibly inspired. I have like literally been scribbling notes this whole entire time. Um, I'm also sitting in my boss's office and had my camera or my mic muted and we were like having a conversation and I was sharing like everything that you're saying. I'm like, Oh my gosh, they're doing this. They're doing this. We have to steal that. So, um, let me ask my question is on that site that you just showed with the, uh, masterminds, how, what, who is in, I think I maybe missed the, uh, okay. About us. You're already five steps ahead of me. Okay. Um, how do we get into this? What is this? Wh- who makes up this, this group of teachers, I guess is my question. My really long question. That's actually a very <laughs> short question. Sorry. Okay. Um, we just asked, we tried to find one teacher from each building who is either Google certified or really leading the way with um, technology in their school. And we asked them if they just wanted to join this so they can share what they're doing with us and then be able to take it into their schools. So um, uh, we have uh, eight teachers and then myself. So we just had our first meeting actually this month. I saw um, James Collier. I know he's at Kentucky Go Digital. Um, yes. Star. He was on our Snow Day special. So, I'm, so now we've got some other people we can tap into. That's amazing. That's awesome. So you're pulling those people together and then you know, highlighting them for the district and then they're modeling the way of your all's vision from your superintendent, from literally the top all the way down and building those teacher leaders. I love it. That's that's a great way to highlight them. This site looks great. Like the font, the pic, like everything is so. I was Thanks. about to comment on that. I'm like, you really have identified a way to make a Google site not look like a Google site. So well done, sister. It is, <laughs> it is beautiful. I'm, I can tell that you're a creative visual person. And that makes a lot of difference for me, um, especially in, you know, if you're sending teachers there, like it needs to be professional, it needs to look professional. And the standards that you have, I'm just, I'm very inspired and impressed. Well done, sister. Well done. So one thing, I, I don't like all the text options in Google Sites. So I go to Canva or Google Slides and I create um, images and then uh, I drag them as images into the site. So like this About Us is a Canva slide that I created. So that's my workaround on the Google fonts or the limited fonts within Google Sites. Well, the time spent on that, because that takes an additional minute or two or a hundred is um, it, it, it paid off because of the site, all of this looks great. It looks so good. It does not look good. You know, the typical, it looks really good, Stacey. Thanks. And then um, I'm going to briefly talk about another way that we deliver PD is by using Google Hangouts. So um, the masterminds, we've decided that we're going to meet each month, um, second Thursday of every month at seven o'clock via Google Hangout. So um, it's hard for everyone to get to central office at 3.30, which is our normal uh, PD time. So um, this kind of makes it more of a laid back um, way to get PD credit for what we're doing. Um, The other group that for group, um, This is the group where uh, our main focus is helping them get Google certified this year. And so our last meeting and in Operation Textbook, we do through Hangouts. So teachers get experience using Hangouts for the exam. And finally, I just like Google Hangouts because it's a convenient connection. Um, Our district is very large. So sometimes, you know, I know with our masterminds groups, some of us are, we live about an hour away from each other. So Hangouts is very convenient um, as a delivery method for PD. And now I'm going to move on to, uh, well, I'm going to introduce Rebecca Corsetti and she's going to talk to you about um, using Google Docs to deliver PD. And I also learned from Stacy doing her Google Infused Classroom book study, I learned about HyperDocs and I was really excited. I like to work through the book study and kind of do my own example so that I can remember which each tool will do and how it will work. And when I got to HyperDocs, I was very excited, but I was also very confused. You can see from the charts what HyperDocs are and what they're not. 
but that didn't really help me understand how to use them. So um, let's look at the link at the bottom of the page. Of course, I Google everything, and I know Google is not a verb, but I still use it as one. And I came to this website, and it is by Phil Hilton and Landis, who are classroom teachers, and they also wrote the HyperDoc Handbook. And you can see a picture of both there on the screen. And I was glad I went to this site because I learned a great deal. If we go up to the top under resources and, and select sample, this helped me initially figure out what exactly a HyperDoc is. Uh, you can see there, you can click on each box and it gives you different HyperDoc, HyperDocs for different subjects. And we've got some geography HyperDocs coming up and I went through a couple of them and, and looked at them and I understood, I loved them. There was, there you go. What place, what does place mean to you? And it's a place project and you can scroll through those slides a little bit. And gives the students different activities to do, gives them a place to reflect, to collaborate with their peers in the classroom. So that helped me understand a little bit better about HyperDocs, but I was excited to find a way to use them in professional learning. So if we go back to the Hyper, um, the link, if you scroll down a little bit, Stacy, you can see in the middle, you can see there's a professional development group of samples. And this is where I found what we used. I borrowed the template from Pleasanton Unified School District in California. And I decided that we would use this to review our district focus on growth mindset this year. And this is what their game looked like. And I believe it's for new incoming teachers because you can see there's a place to learn how to log into ASOP and different things. This is actually a screenshot of the HyperDoc that we're using for PD this month to review our growth mindset. Uh, we have a hashtag as well, the GC Musketeer Mindset. And if you click on that, that'll take us to our HyperDoc. And here we are. Um, directions in the center of the game. And of course, the first direction is to have fun. There's tasks all the way around the board. Um, no certain order that you have to complete the task. You just have to log in first in the top left hand corner where it says log in. If you click that link, it'll take you to a reflection sheet. And the direction told you to put your name in the first box and that this is where you would write your reflections for this PD while you're working through it. Let's go back to the original. There you go. You can see as you go around the board, there's different things to do. When you finish something in one square, you fill it in with a color, and that way your principal will know it's completed. If you have a question, you're encouraged to ask a colleague for help. And if you still have a question, you can see down in number five that there is a click here if you have a question and it goes to a Padlet. And if you had questions there, you could post them and I would answer them for you, but so far no one's posted the question. So Tracy's done an excellent, Tracy and Stacy have done an excellent job. Um, there's different things to do in the game board. After you log in, there's a one square that takes you to the Musketeer Mindset. You can see what other teachers are doing in their classroom. And this is one of my favorite things to look through because you get to see all the neat things that are going on in our school district. But there's lots of other things to do as well. We had a newsletter this year called GC Musketeer Mindset and Musketeer Minute. There's questions that require you to reflect back on that learning and then answer the question that was given. Some spots they like for that one that Stacy just clicked on, you can actually write your answer there. Other parts you have to go to the reflection sheet to write your answer. There's videos to view. So as you work around the board or pick whatever you want to do, you color it in, share it with your principal at the end, and that way, that's how you get your PD credit. They have a sign-in sheet for you. Uh, Tracy actually worked through the document to see how much time it would take to actually do each activity. And the principals have a sign-in sheet for you to do, to receive your credit. And I'm gonna pass you on to Tracy.
Hi guys. Um, my name is Tracy Moracy, and um, I'm the other instructional supervisor here, and I am following um, two gurus. So I'm going to look really unprofessional compared to them. Um, basically, we observed how our principals took on the concept of Google Classroom to share with their staff, and um, just thought it was really neat from having. Um, Heather Worrell come and motivate our principals and our admin. Um, they all started immediately going back and implementing it with their school. So once they kind of taught the teachers for us in a sense, because they had to buy in, they had to use the Google Classroom if they wanted to know what was going on in their school, because they even did their newsletters, their weekly updates, their living calendar, um, all of that. So that really created a lot of buy-in and we thought, okay, how can we expand on this and work on it to deliver PD? So um, we're trying to capitalize on this opportunity. So we started small. Um, here's me, by the way, we're slightly obsessed with Bitmojis because we can make ourselves look as good as we wanna look. So we really like that. Um, started with a science cadre with NGSS implementation and the new process for the science assessment system um, really needed our teacher leaders to have a way to communicate what the district was hoping to see happen. Um, we are a large district. Um, if I'm, I could be wrong, Mrs. Hersley, but I think our buses travel 1,400 miles one way. Um, so our geography is rather expansive. So this has really helped quite a bit getting all of our teachers together. You can't expect them all to drive to central office for every little piece of information. And anyone who um, is working in assessment right now knows that there are changes happening on a regular basis and we can't call them in every time. So um, kind of started this with science and the concept of TCTs and how we were going to discuss and share our TCTs. So we met in person first. Principals um, submitted a teacher to be the science leader of their school. Um, the elementary it tended to be a fourth grade teacher and maybe a primary teacher as well. Um, you know, middle school it tended to be a seventh grade, and at the high school they sent their um, department chair, and they help us correspond and communicate everything that I share on this science cadre um, back out into the schools so they can literally copy and paste anything. Um, they'll contact me and say, hey, can you add so-and-so? They're really interested in seeing this because everything's an open platform. If someone has an interest, we want them to have access to this site. So we we let them share. Um, really, I, I share on this updates on initiatives that we have going on. Maybe it's Science Olympiad information, a great resource uh, of an online um, product that costs nothing because we all know we're working on our budgets. It has to cost nothing for me to want to share it. Um, that gives them some ideas on great labs and models. Then uh, we use it to poll our teachers about which TCT we're going to utilize per grade level um, across the district. We try to keep the same TCT going so that teachers can collaborate and discuss process with the kids, how it went. Um, we share quality student work. And um, every time that I put something, on our live stream, the teachers get that automatic email and it tells them to visit the site. So it really helps for immediate collaboration. And you know, what's been great is some of the teachers by participating have decided to take on the concept of a Google Classroom themselves with students. Um, so they're getting that information from their principals and learning how to do it with them, but then they're also learning it with us in the, the district cadres. So, you know, we share our files. We um I love to, I, I tease my boss, Mrs. Horsley, on a regular basis that I want a pajama day because I'm a true elementary teacher and I miss the um, Polar Express Christmas pajama day. So every year I beg her. So now she finally, you know, says, yeah, you can do PD in your PJs, but at home, don't come to work in them. So um, we do things like share YouTube channels on these and we really try to just inspire our teachers and help them know that we're willing to model what we expect. So we began this venture with PD and sharing in Google Classroom, but we've implemented a lot of other options. So I'm gonna show you uh, one more thing here that we've been doing. 
Now notice my graphics are not as cute as what Stacy has going on, but I tried. And that's all I can tell you. I try. Um, so the, the size cadre was a success. So I went on and built another cadre that was um, for my building assessment coordinators because I'm also um, the DAC for the district. So the site has um, lots of information for them to know about uh, creating a successful testing season. I offer the training for assessment in Google Slides. I took all of the different ones, put them together, and really tried to, um, I'll pull this up for you maybe, um, try to make it engaging for them, downloaded some templates, and really um, try to make the activities and reminders something that the teachers can focus on because they get this training every year. So we really wanted to jazz it up a little bit and um, make it something that they felt um, they could pay attention to and, and ask good questions and have a discussion about. So um, we do that with our assessment training. And then I put in um, target due dates in the calendar, upload all the handouts and the testing manuals, everything in there for them so they can get to that. Um, each Tuesday I do a, a back weekly update now that we're getting closer to assessment time just with reminders and things, and, and they know they can get on there and openly discuss and ask questions. And maybe somebody will jump in and answer the question before I have to, so that's really helpful. Um, the next up thing that we do is we decided that uh, one of our focus areas, we really want all of our students reading on level by third grade. And it's we're not there yet, but we're really working on it. And then the other concept is, what do you do if they are pretty well fluently reading. How are you pushing those kids to the next level? So we started a program called Literature Circles 101. And the first time the teachers actually came and met with me in, oh, I guess I don't have access to that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm logged in as Miss Horsley and evidently she doesn't need access to Literature Circles. So I didn't grant it to her. All right, so <laughs> with that said, um, I can forward that on to you if you need to have access to it later on. But they work through a Google Classroom and literature circles with me. Um, I put ideas, handouts, things that you can utilize in a literature circle, book suggestions, teachers share ways to do their behavior management, um, little feedback. And then by participating, they're getting professional learning credit hours. And um, what's really nice is we're going to move that into more of a Google Hangout, similar to what Stacy's been doing with her, um, her, what are they called, the Musketeer mm -hmm. mind, masterminds. masterminds, yes. So we're going to try to model that a little bit. I kind of like the 7 p.m. I did not realize you were going so late with that, Stacy, but I like the 7 p.m. That gives everybody time to get home and get their kiddos settled and dinner done and all that kind of stuff. So, so we'll work on that. Um, but our main goal is to find creative ways to get these folks to collaborate. One of the other concepts that we um, are really working on is getting that feedback from the teachers. And our feedback from them is they wanted more um, to know what to do with their technology. And they really enjoyed the Chrome add-ons and information that they were learning just from some of our different sessions. So um, we use Google Forms. And they will do surveys. Probably the most beneficial thing I've seen with the forums has been the feedback that we get whenever we ask teachers what they liked and what they didn't like. It's really nice because um, it's anonymous feedback, the way we set it up, and um, less anonymous if they choose to tell us more than what they want to tell us. But um, before we used to have to do it through SurveyMonkey, and you know that was an extra step, and one person had a license. And with this, we can all just create as many uh, surveys as, as we want. So that's, it's really helpful. Um, but you'll notice down here, the concept of YouTube going on here. And that came from my first year here, four years ago. Um, I needed to model some lessons with math teachers. Now I love math, but I am an elementary school teacher with an elementary background. And I needed to teach middle school math teachers how to do pre-algebra and algebra courses. Um, with eighth graders. So 
I did not feel comfortable in that. So I thought, well, I need some exemplars. I need to know um, what it looks like, what good work looks like, what are good examples. And I need teachers to see it going into the classroom successfully. So with that said, um, searched YouTube. Becky loves Google. I love YouTube. So we searched YouTube and I, I searched TeacherTube for ideas um, just for things like decimal work and multiplication concepts and, and ways to get creative with their teaching. The teachers really liked the visual models. So I created them a playlist to kind of make them a reference sheet. And um, that was a way for them to remember exactly step by step how to do everything. Um, so on my playlist, I've, I've added to that. And now there's a guided reading playlist um, that ironically a principal uses with his teachers in PLC for the same concept. He's a high school teacher, wasn't really for sure um, what to ask of his teachers for guided reading, knew it needed to happen, wasn't for sure how the room should look, how it should be set up, what kind of structure should be going on during the lessons. So I created the list for him. And then he went to each PLC um, with grade level meetings and showed them his expectations, kind of let them know he knows what it's supposed to look like. And they could use those as examples and, and help set up their room as well. Um, and they had some exemplar work to go by. So it was really helpful and it let him be the leader, the facilitator of the PD in his school. So um, the last thing here I'll kind of show is, um, I heard you guys talking about EOCs in the background a little bit. Um, we are also doing our online EOCs. We started those today. And uh, we had uh, Mr. Collier, the, the guru from um, our high school. He is our Algebra 2 teacher. So whenever the kids all participated in the practice tests that were released a few weeks back, he asked each one of them to do a Padlet. He set up a Padlet with them to give us feedback on how the test went, what they learned from it, um, what they think was good about it, what they would like to see changed. And as you can see, I went in and kind of snippeted a little bit of our Padlet and marked out some kids' names so you couldn't see anything. Um, but they gave me a lot of um, a lot of information, and I'll be honest, they didn't hold back on what they thought. And it was a free uh, way for them to tell me what was going on. My request from him from the get-go was, after you give these, please tell me what's going on and how it's working. Um, I need to share that. And he found out for me real easy, um, just through the Padlet. And I know he had seen that model with Becky and Stacy before in other meetings. And uh, it was really nice to see the kids take onto that and be honest and give us their true feedback. So, you know, all in all, I can say that for PD purposes, we've moved beyond saving things into a network folder where that we had to get permission for people to have access to a folder, to be able to share and have our network administrator um, constantly answering um, work orders from us to get that set up and going. And now, we choose who we share with and we don't have to go through that extra middleman. So it's been really helpful for us. And we're not gonna lie, the autosave feature is now starting to spoil us a little bit. There are times when I go into the Microsoft world and I forget to save now and then. So um, these are just a few of our initiatives um, and how GC has grown and we've increased our efficiency. So as the Chrome add-ons and tools increase, we feel like our possibilities are endless. So. Um, I'm going to give this back to Mrs. Horsley. And, well, before, uh, yeah. thank you so much. You guys are an incredible team. Um, we are thrilled that you joined us here on Kentucky Go Digital. Um, and I wanted to, we've got a lot of activity happening over on the live YouTube channel. So um, one question specifically is coming in from Ben Maynard. Um, he asked, are you planning on doing a survey or just something maybe at the end of the year to see how this professional learning kind of delivery method, everything that you've described um, during the episode has changed things for teachers. So what's kind of your follow up on that? Um, yes, one of our big goals is to expand this. And honestly, we need to know what they want. They have to tell us our interest. We're looking at more of going into a micro credentialing concept um, where the teachers tell us their interests and we develop the PD to match their interests. There's, you know, we ask our teachers to differentiate in the classroom. 
constantly. That's that's something that everyone struggles doing. Um, so if we're going to ask them to do that, then we have to do the same thing for our staff. So this has been a real key for us to be able to do that. That is exactly um, every I was writing down some notes and everything that you are doing is tailored around the individual um, teacher from the PD where you've got the sites for the if they want to do the book study. Um, you're really trying to meet their need at where they are, whether that be right. entry or even beyond um, right. the modeling. And, and I should have known that. Um, I know I, I met you at Kisti with Stacy. Mm -hmm. And when you have the DAC at the technology conference in the state, then um, you know, Miss Horsley, that you're putting the right people on the bus and your priorities are in line. Um, everything that you have shown us is mind blowing. And, and, and not, I don't think a district can just go in and do this. You talked about four years ago starting this. And I, when you talked about folders, I imagine you said Heather came in and I'm sure she was doing some ninja kicks on those mm -hmm. folders. Um, and that's what made me think that you all, um, you know, you've gradually built this to where now you, you're starting to have an entire system of efficiency at the top all the way down. I love the fact that from the PD aspect to the um, the DAC, to the teacher, you're, you've got the science cadre, um, you're really using the tools that it's not about the tools. It's about how we can become better. And at the end, how kids can be, have more access and be more prepared for the future. Um, it, it's used the right way. Um, so shout out to all of you all. It's It's been an honor to get to, I know I've worked with Stacy more than any of you all, but to meet all of you all, I know Paula Coomer Pleasant has been, you know, shouting your all's names <laughs> for a long time um, to me, but you all, uh, really have a system and you can tell that you all enjoy what you do and it, it's all for the right reasons. It's, it's impressive. But I wanted to chime in. Um, first of all, what a beautiful model. Uh, you know, I, I was telling Mike Marcy, who works here uh, with me at KDE, he, he's a, you know, a, a writer for the Kentucky teacher and he's doing an article. And I said, this, this group here, the, this quartet, it's the superintendent, I think, with the three ed tech leaders. And so, Ms. Horsley, I wanted to ask you, you have three people in your district who are dedicated to uh, digital learning coaching. Uh, what do we, are they technology integration specialists? Stacy is, is our TRT. Okay. She's our okay. instructional person. We're just a team. We all do everything together. These other two ladies are my instructional supervisors in the district. And of course, I'm a big on instructional leadership. So we're just a team. When we're working on something, we all pull together. And I think that this is a, you know, we didn't just say, I didn't just say I want 25% to be Google certified by the end of the year, but we wanted to model till people want to do it. You know, they're eager to get this done because we're showing them from the principals on down in our principal meetings and so forth and making it so easy for them to um, reach out and get these new strategies. It has just been in the choice that we're giving. It's the same kind of things we want to see happening in the classroom. We're trying to model for principals and teachers. Well, really, the big takeaway for me is how I can't really tell who the ed tech leader is because all three of them are with tech technology pretty savvy. I mean, yes, they are. <laughs> and it sounds like to me that you have three ed tech leaders. They're helping you because it, the line has been blurred so beautifully there. And I'm sure Stacy's really been uh, the spark that has helped get that going with your instructional leadership team. And, you know, when you say Stacy Spears across the state, everybody's like, oh, Stacy Spears, you know, Stacy Spears, like she's made quite the name for herself as an ed tech leader here in Kentucky. So you guys are very lucky to have her. But what I think is so beautiful in this episode and inspiring, and I'm so glad that this is the episode that Mike's going to be featuring for the article. The superintendent is sitting next to the instructional staff and the ed tech leader, and you're all at the table together uh, making magic for your district. So it's just such a, a beautiful exemplar here in Kentucky. And I want to go back to the branding. They mentioned your branding. Everything that you guys produce, the attention to detail, your font choices, your color choices. And, you know, when we think about professionalizing education and thinking about business. You know, all those little branding choices are very important to build your tribe and build that enthusiasm. So I wanted you to know that I noted that as well. And also your social media strategy, GC Musketeers. I know your hashtag because you guys have really 
been purposeful in building your tribe and communicating your message through social media as well. And then that renders teachers like Mr. Collier, who is now a Kentucky Go Digital leader. We have a couple of his videos on our channel. And so really that's uh, what we get out of a district like this that's so intentional. You have so many great people at the table. Your branding is good. Your social media strategy is good. So that reaps amazing teachers and students. So it starts from the top, Ms. Horsley. And I know you said you brought Laura in and I know she really kickstarted so much of this good work in your district and that was a strong partnership. So it's just so neat to see. And I know she's very excited about Greenup County success as well. And so I just want to say, uh, to conclude, you guys are a true model for the rest of the state. So kudos to you and your leadership team. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, it has been an absolute honor to get to um, be on this show with you all and learn from you. And um, before we close out, I would like for Elaine just to talk about like all the things they talked about. So if someone's watching this and they're like, Google slide, Google slide. I mean, I think you mentioned every tool, tool that Google has. So Elaine, do you want to talk about if you're watching this, how you can follow up for some, some support? In Kentucky Go Digital, we really work on creating and connecting and sharing. And so we have to support you these create videos. And I'm going to ask Stacy if she doesn't mind to sometime make a create video on how she was using some of those Google sites and types of things that maybe we can use that power of pause. So once once someone helps us with a create video, we put it on one of on the YouTube channels so that you can use that power of pause to make your to say, oh, I needed to help with a Twitter account or I need help with Google Hangouts. And so that way you can use these little videos to get a little bit more familiar with it. So and then connecting, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew about how you can can connect with Kentucky Go Digital. Of course, we've got the Twitter, the hashtag uh, Kentucky Go Digital, as well as our Facebook page. But if you haven't gotten to connect with us on our regionals, these are our dates for the different regionals. And of course, you can come to any one of them, come to all of them. If you haven't gotten to sign up for that, make sure you do that. And if you need that link, that's going to also be in our resources with this slide deck. And that is Bitly Kentucky Go Digital Registration. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us and we would be happy to help you with that. So you are joining, getting ready to close out the show with us plan to join us next week, April 25th, 11 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time with Gary Field, superintendent from Bowling Green Independent Schools. He will be talking about the same thing, superintendents leading the charge, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. It'll be another great episode. We can't wait to hear from him and um, close out the superintendent series along with uh, this EOC testing cycle too. So, um, <laughs> Superintendent Miss Horsley, thank you again for joining us. And until next time. Get involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or follow.